Ice Power 125A62 is the first large success of Ice Power company. They released a series of three boards, but this one was uh, most popular. And I also should agree that architecture, how they built, is really impressive, especially at the moment when they did it. You don't have many successful designs in a, in a market and practically all innovation has been done by ice power itself yes there is a huge market with those boards where people have them on hands and the question is could we make something great and actually there's a good news yes you can make very good amplifier using two of those boards and we made a kit but first let's refresh our knowledge about this board here is engineering manual and we will go through some critical points to refresh our knowledge. First, key specifications. And the first one, 450 watts in bridged configuration. And this is where we want to be. This is the best possible quality what we can get out of it. And 450 50 watts, why those are important? Actually, if you are looking for an endgame amplifier, it should be relatively powerful the minimum about uh, 500 watts and then it's really end game you can drive any load you can drive any speaker you can drive large speakers you can drive small speakers and you always have sufficient power because those low frequency peaks those are really power consuming and not to suppress the bass you need that significant power 450 watts are close to end game amplifier you are very close with that solution to endgame amplifier. It has low total harmonic distortions for those who are addicted to total harmonic distortions. Uh, important thing, as a system total efficiency is 86%. Uh, Let's round it to uh, 85% yeah, for, for uh, simple calculations. That means 15% will go for heat and we need a good design we need a design with a good airflow anyway to really perform otherwise this board has a tough time uh, all the time working close to the maximum temperatures it has on board regular unregulated auxiliary power supply which also is valuable for some preamp circuits uh, last thing it has selectable and i'm emphasizing selectable mains and you should switch with a jumper onboard jumper between 220 volts and uh, 110 volts uh, by default is shipped with a 220 volts and if you put in a 110 volts nothing bad will happen so uh, amplifier just uh, will not start and then you move jumper in a, in a 110 volts uh, position and then it works if you do vice versa then uh, you will damage the board Okay, it has all, all protections, it has all electromagnetic compatibility certificates, industrial board. Another great feature is frequency response, and this frequency response is crazy linear, up to, up to 50 kilohertz. So, this is a really successful board, and output filter is, has been uh, developed uh, with real knowledge uh, how to make it. Actually, it's very difficult to achieve, and it has excellent excellent super neutral sound reproduction if you want it used for a studio excellent choice excellent choice also you have low output impedance or high damping factor it performs very well on low frequencies as well if you want to build in a 12 volt trigger it's relatively easy to implement you also can manage it uh, remotely but by default we are not offering that uh, that function about input stage, and that's important. Uh, it has eight kilo ohm input impedance. Input is unbalanced, and you need a source with a low output impedance to really drive this stage. To fix it, uh, we put additional very, very good preamplifier, and then this uh, amplifier really shines. Otherwise, you are uh, heavily dependent on a, on a source output impedance. For a BTL uh, module setup, you need a one channel uh, uh, with a positive phase and one uh, inverse. And uh, this is done with a special preamplifier in, uh, in our kit. Here is important note, and this note uh, refers to all Class D amplifiers. I will read it uh, uh, from, from that manual. 
The IcePower 125ASX2 module is designed for music reproduction, which means that the output power of the amplifier will never be continuous. So, the noting it's not a continuous sine wave. Research has shown that RMS level of any music signal don't normally exceed 1 8 of the peak value, crest factor of 8. And the power supply is therefore designed for a large short-term power handling and low continuous power handling. Audio amplifier power supplies should be designed in a way for high peak power and relatively low continuous power due to the specifics of audio signal. And then it's right power supply. That peak power is very, very important. Otherwise, you will have suppressed bass. If the average output power of ice power 125A62 exceeds 65 watts at 4 ohms, single ended models both channels driven, or 70 watts at uh, 4 ohms uh, bridged mode for a longer time at 25 Celsius ambient temperature, the module will reach its maximum allowed temperature and the temperature protection will be activated. So, we should consider some uh, some cooling features and never never use a sine wave at a full power. Then we will damage a board. But otherwise, it's really responsive and capable board. So, and we need we need a preamplifier or buffer amplifier, and it is built on uh, Ina 1650 uh, chipset. Here it is, small small board. This is buffer board. You need to connect. Uh, service voltages from uh, ice power board and then there's inputs and outputs and you interconnect it and then this solution really shines and why it is so good yes this is a balanced input uh, chip uh, with a high common mode rejection about 91 decibels now that means noise what will uh, come through the lines will be suppressed by you know, around 25,000 times so even signal is super noisy from your uh, long interconnection cables, then it's totally clean afterwards and uh, then you have excellent low noise uh, solution. And uh, you can see to achieve all those super high parameters, there is a chipset and chipset has built in uh, with one lithography process uh, developed uh, uh, the resistors, it's important, and then you get all those super precision. There are two channels in one chip, and there is a, a basic, basic interconnection. So, very, very good preamp, and your uh, input, uh, input uh, take it has uh, around uh, 100 kilo ohms uh, input impedance. Normally, you have about a 10, so it's very, very easy to drive. Any source, even bad designed source, will, will sound great with that uh, preamplifier. Yeah, and you can see it's very small. You can integrate in different designs uh, using together with this uh, ice power board. Super small. And how those kit looks? Yeah, you have universal universal enclosure. I had it, and then I then I put uh, all configurations for those two boards you can see here is also silent fan it temperature regulated silent fan in audible you have all possible uh, interconnection options uh, input is is balanced if you want to run it in a, in a single ended operation you can do it with uh, adapter no there are such adapters so you can buy a wire xlr to rca interconnection and yeah and then, then you have option to to, to connect uh, uh, to connect RCA. So there is no separate RCA uh, options. Uh, best quality you can get with a balanced source because then you really has a full potential of the preamplifier. But in reality, both solutions are uh, uh, okay if you are using you no know, up to 10 meters uh, interconnection wires. If longer, then balanced is preferred. On the front panel, there is an on switch and uh, a power indicator. What is inside, you can see, high quality silent fan. And then all, uh, all uh, your assembling uh, lands to securing boards and, and plugging uh, connectors in a correct way. And here you have a thermosensor, you, you put it close to heat sink and then 
it senses temperature and it works. Looking closer, what kind of components we have. Here is a fan management board. Here is additional 12 volt board just for a fan. So all those uh, cooling, cooling solution is uh, separated from uh, amplifier board. And then those small preamplifiers also integrated in a chassis. And uh, here is uh, self-clinking standoffs for a board, very easy to integrate. This is how assembled unit looks. If you have two boards, you can build incredibly good amplifier, close to 500 watts, 450 watt per channel, exceptionally good amplifier. Uh, I sold some of them already and um, there are, uh, and I sold also those in, in the past and the customers are still writing uh, happy messages how good this amplifier sound when you put everything in, in the right way and you have sufficient power. Thickly between us it's a really really impressive amplifier. One of the best what I have heard. But you can get all this maximum if you have preamplifier board and uh, when you put in a bridge interconnection, then really it shines. Then it's NK amplifier. And in my opinion, if you have such amplifier, then you should really work on the content, you work on the preamplifier pre part, work on many other things. Now this is done thing. Small gift for everyone who has who has two such boards on hands, and I know that there is a large market. Also even there are three generations of this board, I think, three versions. All of them sounds great. The key difference is uh, in, uh, in a temperature or in, uh, in efficiency. And um, I put a small fan and then efficiency mm, doesn't count anymore. You can cool it at any, any operation level at, uh, and it's still silent. So if you put two boards uh, without fan, then then those would be marginal, but with a fan you cool it perfectly. Yeah. Cold air is coming in and hot air is uh, coming out. It's a perfect solution. How about the pricing? Uh, I will price it uh, the same as other my, my kits. Those uh, high-end kits are priced in the same price for 249 euros plus uh, 25 euros uh, shipping with uh, FedEx. So if you have two boards, great option to really build fantastic amplifier. Practically all your assembling uh, lands to securing boards and, and plugging uh, connectors. You can find those kits in my web shop at uh, tcrasters.com. Web link is available at the beginning of description. Good luck with your project.